what's going on, man? Beyond the fairway, back at it. Any Koyak, Will Lowry, Dougie Fresco. You know, Will, like, I just, there's there's so many things that I'm proud of. That uh, One, I'm proud I get to do this with y'all. Will, I'm proud of of, of you and, and the pink beanie. I'm proud of the towel that is draped over your golf bag that hasn't been used. But what I'm not proud of, and um, Henny, I've got to I've got to come at you fairly aggressively. I'm not proud of your shot, Henny. Look, I, you know what? We did the we did we've done golf channel hits together. We've done all kinds of things. This is the FaceTime background that I'm used to seeing you with when we hit you up just to say what's cracking. So I don't know if if your wellies is out of place or you got the Alibaba, <laughs> the Amazon ain't working. I know you're trying to normalize normal body types with that sweater on, but what I'm seeing in this shot right now is is it. It misrepresents who you are and what you provide to the golf industry. I'm just going to put it out there. Will, I don't know. Hi, Will, by the way. How you doing? I just, Henny. Uh. <laughs> you know what? Um, mm. The last bit mm. you said, that it, my shot misrepresents me and everything I bring to the golf industry. That's the part that I'm going to wholeheartedly disagree with. Because this shot is actually everything I bring to the golf industry. <laughs> I am nothing if not real. I'm a total walking calamity. And in that, I am sometimes brilliant and sometimes a complete and utter mess. And I own it all and I love it. And so that's what you're just going to have to get used to and deal with. But I will buy a ring light from Amazon because I love you and I know this annoys you. And I will say I have a report. So... The first episode, you said I had no background because I had a white wall and I was trying to be all fancy. So I have a bit of a background now. I got my basic Betch Stanley mug. I've got a couple pillows. I've got the bottom edge of my family pictures. And um, I have spent £350 on the framing of a master's flag with all the little bits and bobs well, so that it can look nice on my wall set up when I can you know, make it upstairs to my office area, which I will do when I get my ring. In a few episodes time, by the end of the season, <laughs> I will have this down. But no, you know what though, Henny, also real stuff though. I'm glad, I'm, I am I love our, our platform and I love it because of the conversations that, that mm. we can get into. And it's not just about us or, or talking to, to people that, that are, are tour players, et cetera. It's about talking to folks that we vibe with and, and, and folks that, that we want to, to know more about and hear from as well. So without further ado, Henny, I'll let you do the honors. Absolutely. I'm very excited about this. As Will always says, what's your cat's phrase, Will, about influencing in the community? Yeah, yeah, there's influencers and there's impact influencers. This man that we have on today is the ultimate impact influencer. He has single-handedly made a huge amount of change here in the UK and his reaches are starting to go beyond uh, as it pertains to black golf and so he is the founder and runner and everything extraordinaire of black british golfers check them out on instagram and i found i so i'm gonna say before we get ray on i'm just gonna say my experience is that during the pandemic i found them on instagram and in terms of impact influencing it's so different from any other instagram page i've ever come across trying to do something in this space because he started out literally just showcasing your average everyday black golfer. Like there's some bad swings in there. There's some good swings in there. There's everyone of different ages. He just featured black British golfers, black golfers, so that people could see, oh yeah, that person looks like me and they play golf. That person looks like me and they play golf. And it really like was a magnet for black British, the black British golf community to all come together and be like, hey, I'm featured on black British golf. This is so cool. And then um, fast forward a few years later, I went to uh, his first golf day last year that brought everyone in the community together. And it was the most empowering experience ever. And I want to say all of this while he's not here because he is the most humble man ever and will take zero credit for anything that he's done. He's got bigger and better things planned. He never stops despite the fact that he's got three kids 
and the very, very understanding well, one. Get, get so, him in well, here. I mean, that's that's not cool. I mean, I mean, like, shit, dang. You know, I mean, dang. <laughs> you know he's in the waiting room ado. right now. <laughs> 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 Let's go golf. I would love to. Let's go golf. Let's go golfing. Hey, Ray, what's up, baby? How you doing, man? Welcome in here, Beyond the Fairway. <laughs> hey, well, guys, I mean, how are you doing? I mean, we, we, we kind of know what you did, so yeah. you can go now, actually. <laughs> yeah, all right, right. Hey, good to see you, Bob. It's, see, it's, hey, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. We, we heard everything, bruh, bruh. <laughs> well, rough, I just no. came to set up. That's the very super, super brief, honestly, like... <laughs> History of Ray in Black British golfers. Uh, uh, oh, He's look. done way more stuff within the community, like before that, as well. But Ray, so, b- before we roast Henny, uh, for how long it took her to get you in here, uh, <laughs> let, <laughs> let's talk a little bit, man. Like, like, tell us about kind of your your background in this game and, and what inspired you to kind of put something together to bring people together. Because if you did that in America, would have had the cops called on you. That's for damn sure. <laughs> That's a fact. Too many brothers at the yeah. with dogs. Will they have dogs? No. They have I mean, they, they, I, I mean, Stop. dogs would have came, but it would have been luxury. Stop. Um, yeah, thanks, guys, for having me on. Henny, I feel like uh, you've set me up, So, but I appreciate you know that. So, um, yeah, thanks for having me on. Uh, I'm a big fan of you guys, all, all three of you. Um, goes That's without good. say. And uh, I'm glad I'm glad to be here. Um, yeah, I'm Ray, and um, in a lot of ways, I get to wear the title of the founder of Black British Golfers. Um, and it's not something that I, I Henny, Henny will tell you. I don't I don't walk around saying that that's my title or whatever. But yeah. um, I'm the custodian. Of, of what of what uh, we've created today or up to this point, uh, Black British Golfers, which is a platform basically to showcase the game from our community's perspective and to also debunk this narrative and myth that's pervaded the game for years uh, here in the UK, that Black people in the UK are not interested in playing golf, are, are not invested in, uh, in the game. And, um, get that too. you know... <laughs> yeah, it, it 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 was a it was a narrative that really um w- you know, you go back, you b- go back. I started playing the game around about 2003, 2004. Um and I'm I'm not even close to anywhere near good, but um I I know what the game stands for, what it signifies and what it can give you. Um I've got three kids now, one of my kids plays and loves the game and, and and literally it's it's a good time for us to spend family time together three four hours out in the sticks uh, or out on the course um you know enjoying enjoying all the benefits of the game and then some but i've always known that at the back of my mind there is this there is this conversation within the game that's being had um that seems to ignore uh, or overlook the the black British community here in the UK. So this one time I was driving um, up to a place called Stirling. I live in Edinburgh, Scotland. Um, and I was driving up to Stirling and I was actually listening to, to a, a, a podcast uh, where Henny was on. And Henny oh. was, it was during... <laughs> you know... Um, and, and and both both Henny and Zane Zane Scotland, who's another another uh, brother here, um, I was listening to their episodes back to back, and essentially in those co- conversations they were talking about their experiences when they were coming up through the game, as as budding pros and and aspiring pros, and the things that they've experienced and 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 how they they found the game to be to them uh, in 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 their years. So as I was listening and taking in that experience, I mean, in fact, I have this vivid it's in it's emblazoned in my mind honey that that part where you talk about the balcony and the girls coming in uh towards the last hole and you overhearing or uh, um them saying something it's something that it's something that when i heard you talk about that 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 kind of touched touched a nerve and and and, and touched something in me and it kind of stuck in my head because i was like okay well you're at the, the top end of the game trying to make it and you're experiencing these things and we are over here um just trying to be social golfers hacking our way through the course 
we don't get to tell those stories as a community. We don't get to hear those stories as a community. What we get to do is hear the American side of the narrative. Mm. So now I don't have, you know, it goes without saying, we don't have anything against that. But actually what what was um, evident was the fact that actually if you, if you, if you start uh, superimposing the American narrative, you overlook us over here in, in, in the UK. So there was nothing before we, before we came through, there was nothing in terms of content. You could Google it and there was no content around black British golf. It was just non-existent. Um, and so I took it upon myself to set something up. Um, it was the height of the pandemic. So, um, you know, there was some things that came out of it that allowed some of us to leverage the the fact that people were for lack of a better word um locked 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 down and we were able to take that um captive eyeballs and and start putting content out and and just trying to show something different trying to show the game in a different perspective the fact that black people play this game here in the uk black people who are taxi drivers bus drivers teachers bricklayers um, you know, nurses, doctors, as well as professional, aspiring professionals, young, young future athletes, uh, the older generation from the whole, whole, whole spectrum of, of, of our community. We try to just show a story every day from 2021, um, you know, to the end of the year. And we managed to do that. We did that two years straight where I was able to just show a story every day, a share a story, a black mm-hmm. British story and and people people resonated it resonated with people and people people started to see the things that uh we're 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 trying to put across um i always say to the guys in the industry i'm not here i'm not really protesting i'm not i'm not holding placards out i'm not interested in that part of it i can and i could but actually what i'm showing you is that there is there is a way that we can go about doing this that puts the game or allows us to double click uh, the game into our community and take mm. it to the places that it doesn't travel into. See, I you like know? that. I like that expression though. Double click the game into our community. Will we might have to keep that yeah. one nearby. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to write that one down. That, that's, it, it, that's dope though. Like that's what, a, it's an easy way to put that. Go ahead. Will. I was saying, what are some of the, what are some of the, are you getting pushback a lot from to, you know, to, I guess the double click to kind of get the implement the game and all it has to offer. Well, I don't. I wouldn't say it's pushback. I think it's more to do with the fact that people just don't don't see the value of that. So what what tends to happen is that, you know, I say I want to go and do this. I want to go and engage this, uh, our community in this area, and everybody looks at you like, what you, what what, what what's why, you know? Or we've tried that and it hasn't succeeded. But actually, what I always talk about is, historically, it what what's happened is there's there's been this whole helicopter approach to delivering the game so um hmm. the 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 powers that be they come up with a really fantastic uh idea or or concept that they're going to go into a community with bells and whistles and a new initiative and a new format of the game <laughs> or or whatever it is you know and and and, and they're going to have lights flashing lights everything and they get into the space and don't get me started create the, create <laughs> create, create the razzmatazz you know it you know it so they they get people excited people show up and they 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 they, they express an interest and then what happens a, a week a month even if i'm generous three months or even a year later what happens they withdraw all of that they, they get well, back in the helicopter and zoom off dude right we had right? something similar to happen we went and talked to the people in tulsa at the pga championship we got all these kids during the pga championship week in tulsa all riled up about golf to yeah. save your game yeah. of, of yeah. your your social livelihood and your social mobility here's the golf yeah. and and look yeah. at us we're we're succeeding in this this well the appearance of us succeeding in this sport and and there was this one dude i, I don't remember his name but i didn't remember what he looked like and he was like man y'all full of shit and I was like, what? He's like, y'all going to come in here and get all these kids excited about golf, tell them how great it is, and then as soon as this shit is over, y'all throwing the deuces and y'all up out of here. And we left with what? And I was like, wow, that's a it's, very valid that, point. That's the issue because now you you not only leave the, the, the vacuum that was there before, but you leave another vacuum. So you've actually caused two problems. 
there was no golf in, initially, which was what we were looking to address. But now you got people excited about golf, and then withdrawn everything. And and, okay. and the guy yes. who was delivering, yeah. So the guy who was supposed to deliver it has got back into the helicopter and and scooted off and 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 back to whichever part of the the the, the world he's from. But and it's nothing against him and, and anyone else who's involved in this. It's just that there was no joined up thinking in the entire. Um, process so they don't bring us they don't bring the community in when they come up with the strategic initiatives and they don't engage the community when they look to deliver the initiative so the coaches but, have no connection to that local community and likewise the the, the people have no connection to the coach yeah. Ray before we let you go I will we had a, a little chat a few weeks ago about influencers and this is talking to something that you mentioned about the numbers within the golf community and outside the golf community. And I really enjoyed this. And I think you guys will too, Will and Doug, um, that whenever we talk, Ray and I, about influences and discussions around golf and how to, you know, grow the game or what messages we're giving, he, Ray, you get so annoyed <laughs> when golf influences or when golf talks to golf. That's Ray's pet hate. He hates With it. Golf. He's like, yeah. we're not talking... <laughs> Why is golf talking to golf? That's not growing the game. Yeah. If you're talking to yeah. yourself, you need to be talking to literally everyone else. Mm. I, I, I think I think I think that comes back to that 65 million number because because I don't have anything. I don't, to be clear, each to their own. And and you know I've got friends who are influencers and want to be influencers. So that 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 goes without say. But what I do believe is that. Um, you can't have a conversation. It's navel gazing, because essentially, when when you when you create content, golf content for golfers, or go- content that doesn't cross over, what tends to happen is you you close in on yourself. So the right. sport has this 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 knack or, or ability to 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 close rank on itself, um, and and basically withdraw into itself because because hey i mean this is what we're going to be doing it doesn't really matter but uh, literally like I, like i said there is more people who don't play golf than play golf why would why would we not be having conversations with those people outside the game and try and bring them into what we're trying to build right and the best way to do that is start to having to start having content and 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 ideas that are coming going out of the game and traveling out of the game and seeing how that resonates. Because if I, if I put something out there and the kid looks at it and is like, Oh no, I'm not, I'm not getting with that. I don't, I don't understand it. I'm not interested in that. That, that shows you that I'm not, I'm not transcending. I'm not actually, uh, you know, relevant to them. So the more we do that, the more we start to learn, um, uh, you know, in a feedback sort of way that actually I can, I can actually start having conversations with people, from outside of the sport uh, and get them interested and excited. And not the cliche, get a rapper or an NBA player or, or a football player from our side. And I've, again, I have no, nothing against them. I have nothing against them. <laughs> bro, we can I talk. Have... I love you, man. I love you, bro. I, I a lot love of, you. A lot of these guys are my friends, but it's, 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 e- it's too, that's the easy part. That's the easy part. You know, that's, that's the easy thing to do. Like, let's get a, you can almost see the way that decisions being made. And, and I feel that that takes away from the game because guess what, how am I supposed to even contemplate having something in common with an NBA player or a football player, or, you know, we have nothing in common. They have more in common with the, 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 that, that, that level of the game that's up there that we're, 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 mm-hmm. we're we're as unattainable for most people. What we want to do is bring the game closer to to the average or or to the local and 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 make make it look look like a real real thing, you know. Well, how how and that's and that's what I'm, he probably said it already. But how do you increase the awareness of growth opportunities? You know that golf creates outside the industry. Like, what are some of the ways that you suggest that that we can do that? Well, I mean, first and foremost, it's if if your content if if the content or the ideas are not <clears throat> resonating outside of golf then they're not they're not ideas that yeah. really is that they're not they're not it it doesn't matter how good it looks for us if it doesn't 
resonate with people outside of golf because I I actually or we we from our platform's perspective we try and put our content on other non-golfing platforms and to see how that performs and how that looks you know one of the things that we did for our event um, last year is we had a kids who are working in journalism but have no background in golf we had them come down and get them to tell the story from their perspective put the game in their hands and let them let them tell the story the way they see it right so not having the traditional golf media even though we had like we had like traditional golf media there they're not the focus necessarily what what we were really looking at is can kids who are aspiring journalists see the game the way or what would they see if you put them in in that context and some of the things that they came up with were like wow okay that's that's dope that's interesting that's relevant um now let's put that in 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 on that track and let it run into the community let's put that on that platform and see what that looks like and if 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 the engagement is 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 positive then it shows you that you're resonating outside of golf. If the engagement is lackluster, then you can show you that actually just because it looks uh, or feels right within the golf space doesn't actually mean it's resonated outside of the golf. So, yeah, I mean, I think it's a much broader conversation and we can go, you know, we can go hours on hours on this one. Um, Henny and I, we, we have, you know, endless conversations on these kind of topics. Um, yes, we do. And, and you know it's 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 one of those things that i feel i feel when we get to that point where here's the thing by the way the the underlying numbers for baseball and golf are the same but but the revenue streams for baseball and golf are not the same no or at least from what we know but baseball right now in the off season they are in in the Dominican Republic, the Nicaragua, you know, all the places in the world where they can see potential Japan, they're traveling, the game is traveling into all those places and, and countries and parts of the world where they can see potential to grow the game and bring, you know, the game. I don't know much else about baseball, but I know that bit because you can see what they're trying to do. Um, but for us, for us, what tends to happen is even when we try and do those kind of things, it's still that helicopter approach that we just talked about, um, where you know you go to a, some part of Africa and 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 deliver secondhand clubs. Again, nothing against that, but but then what? Then what? You know, can you show a kid a pathway from from where they are to what's possible with these game with this game and 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 rather than you just looking good on social media with, with, with the content you've created, can you show that kid a pathway from where they are to, to achieving something within the golf space? Because, you know, there's fantastic opportunities um, across the game. One in 200 pounds in the UK, one in 200 pounds spent in the UK is spent within the golf industry. Right. That's a lot of money. Oh no, we have that stat in America. Yeah. (laughs) But, but it, it, it it's it it shows you that the potential for for golf outside of just playing it there's career opportunities there is um uh jobs within the game that can allow you to actually thrive within it you don't have to play it to to actually have a career or or or, or um a successful job within the industry it's just about having having the ability to see the value uh, the entire value proposition and and then responding to it Absolutely. We honestly are so grateful for you coming on, Ray. I'm I'm super happy. I'm like a little puppy running around a, a dog park right now because I got my she three got favorite people on line, in one Will. place. <laughs> <laughs> what I she live with do- two dogs. Three. Yeah. <laughs> three. <laughs> Let's not go there. Hey, Ray, no, no. thank you so much for your time and for giving your insightful wisdom as always. Um, I will connect you guys, all three of you, Anytime. after this episode because I think you guys will have some good conversations as well. And as you can tell, Ray is my 
He's my he's my Yoda. He's my guru. Rick, you see Rick, why he now? Got some, he got some soul to him, man. He you know, I love he, it. I love he, it. He, 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 he mm-hmm. like he like from Wakanda. He got he speaks for the ancestors. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That <laughs> ancestral hey, yes. vibe. Hey, like, I tell which, you this. I though, hey, I, hey, I tell you this. Though, I love the fact that we went from a podcast and the way uh, Henny did the outro, it went it turned to a Zoom. I'm gonna connect you guys. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, but I, I have this will. I got this random want to like pass the collection plate. Around right now. Yeah, like I'm back at church right now. Right? Yeah, yeah. Sure. Pass the plate. Yeah. yeah. Hey, uh, hey, Ray, he, we appreciate you, brother. He, oh, okay. No, I appreciate you guys having me on. Hey, big shout out for, for Ray. You know, stop. Henny, I don't even know what time it is over there, Henny, but y'all probably on the same realm of time. And I appreciate y'all staying up late to go beyond the fairway. But he said something interesting. He said, golf talking to golf. And I really found. I feel like that's one of like a, a will thing that Will would say, man, golf can't talk to golf because it's gonna stay within golf. And, and I, I thought the point was valuable. And Will, here's the next question: Is is DJ Khaled the biggest influencer in golf right now? Mm, yes, I believe he is. I believe he's the biggest influence that can really move the needle. In fact, he moved the needle so much, I asked him, well, I'm trying to get to him some way, somehow. Uh, I'm trying to see if he'd come on the, the show Home Course Advantage mm. for me. But I can't get to him. So I hope hope this message get out to him eventually. I hope somebody Maybe. can send us to him. But, and, and Hitty, it raises an interesting point, you know, just in talking to Ray about how Ray, Ray has an attitude where he doesn't need influencers. He's going to build community you know, raise that economy as a scale and scope and present a, a whole product to to raise the bar. But then on the flip side here back in the States, you've got DJ Khaled, who was taking up the game less than a year ago, and now he's doing videos for the PGA Tour. He's playing golf every week. He's bringing P. Diddy in. And it's just, I got a little disconnect between talking to Ray and then seeing how, how the industry has kind of gravitated towards a DJ Khaled. I feel like anytime you're trying to make change, there's more than one way to skin a cat. And I think different viewpoints and different angles of attack are important. I think if everyone's pushing in one direction, you're not as strong. So I feel like what Ray's saying has its value and then using the influencers and what they're doing in a celebrity scale has its value as well. And for example, like from a female, but like DJ Khaled doesn't really do anything for me. So like... Mm -hmm. I can't speak to that, but someone like Jada Pinkett Smith or um, Cassie, for example, when I saw them take like post goal from their Instagram, I was like, oh, that's cool mm. because that might be a young girl's first ever exposure to golf or like, oh, that game. Like, I love her music. I love what she does. I love her acting. Oh, and she plays golf. Like, that's cool. So in that in that way of thinking, I can see that it's good to expose the game, but to Ray's point, is that going to make people, you know, become professional golfers? Probably not, because that's not going to address the real, the very real funding issues and equipment issues and access issues. And like, I I remember saying to someone once who was very heavily involved in growing the game in the San Francisco Bay Area, and I said to him, what's the biggest hurdle that you've come across? What do you need? Like, if I said to you, here's a pool of money to go into somewhere what do you need what's been the struggle and I was expecting something big and deep and profound and he's like Henny we just need a bus like we just need transport Mm. to get the kids from the school to the golf course Mm. now those issues aren't going to go away by DJ Khaled or any celebrity or influencer introducing the game to their audience Mm. those issues are real and they need to be addressed in the way that I think Ray's addressing them um, but I, I look. I think everything has its value. Let me let me ask you this question, both of you guys. Which which has bigger impact? Okay, as far as eyeballs and maybe inspiration, the individual who are who is in golf media, such as you guys, when you guys are on the tube talking about golf with a microphone in your hand, giving your perspective. Is that long, is that longer lasting than a person of like a DJ Khaled or influent influencer who's outside of the golf hardcore space? No, I, and I go back to, to Ray's point. Well, 
golf talk in the golf. As much as as much as we loved golf and and you know our platforms and what we do, at the end of the day, we're talking to a core group of people. You see what I'm saying? So if if you're a 15 year old uh, high school student, regardless of ethnicity, age, whatever, you're just a, that's where you are. If you trying to, you're not gonna hear me. I'm not gonna come up in your explore page on your Twitter. I'm not gonna come up on anything. You're not gonna hear from me. But you will hear a, a a DJ Khaled song, a sample, a post, something. You're going to see he's got 33 million followers, 34, excuse me. And the likelihood of you catching him, catching fire to the game, and then getting to a, someone like me, that's way more plausible than the other way. Exposure is nothing without action. I can be exposed to the game all I want. How am I going to buy a set of clubs? How am I going to get to the golf course frequently? How am I going to pay for lessons? How am I going to even enter an AJGA event? Mm. How, how am I going to do all those things? Well, you got that exemption for I can. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I can I can look at Doug, DJ Khaled, the networks, whatever I want on my Instagram and on the TV. But if I can't get to it, what use is any of that? It's an industry-wide action issue, in my personal opinion. At the end of the day, golf clubs are still going to be, especially here in the UK for the most part, like intimidating spaces. Golf equipment is still going to be too expensive. And like compared to other sports where football, for like soccer, sorry, for example, or basketball, I can go down to my local park that I can walk to, I can buy myself a, a ball, ball and I can play. Mm-hmm. And I can keep playing, and I can keep playing, and I can actually get really good. And there's a million programs that are dedicated towards me that I can see a pathway. There's mm. none of those. Okay, maybe I don't know. I don't really know of any dedicated pathway programs that's going to see you right from like junior level all the way through to professional level. Mm. Some of them, I think, act, uh, are like attacking each different step, maybe, but not in a way that you really need them to. Are you but, really giving me everything I need to be able to enter the game? And without that, exposure is great, but like it's not doing anything. So, so that sounds like that goes back to the point of having, you know, uh, having people who can relate in leadership roles so companies can kind of do their part in helping. That's what it kind of comes down to. Because he, he said some dope stuff, man, you know, what, 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 what he was speaking to when it comes to companies. Like, like, well, the thing is, it makes sense financially what he's saying. It makes sense to grow the game, right? Because mm-hmm. you're going to get way more people playing, way more yeah. people buying your product. Like, that it, all completely makes sense. So there is incentive for the companies to do that. Absolutely. But but then you have the cultural issue within golf. And Ray and I talk about this quite a lot. Is And maybe this is a conversation for another day because it's a deep conversation but does the golf industry really want to change do you think that that diversity equity and inclusion work inclusionary work do you think it should be quiet or loud i i'm on the i i think it should be quiet i don't think you should be like hey look at us we're diverse and we have blacks and 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 you know gays and and trans we got all these people look at all this look at us go look yay no Look how no, see, diverse see that, we are. But that, that's where it's a bit of an oxymoron. If 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 it's quiet, if it's quiet and done by the wrong people, the when wrong people in the room, it looked like it's a diversity checkbox. Right? If you that's if you don't have the really. if you don't have the right people in the room that can authentically often authentically oh. tell the story that you're trying to portray. I think it it come across wrong, but it, if you're loud, if you're loud and say, "Hey, we got we're doing this," and somebody who comes from that same community, yeah, you should be loud. You, I think you should be loud. But mm-hmm. I have a problem is I think people are being loud and they don't come from the same community, so it look like we're just checking off a box, like we're just hey, let's that's the helicopter effect that Ray just mentioned, you know. And I, I'm not I'm not sure which one's a cart, which one's a horse. But I do know this. I really firmly believe that golf industry as a whole has really did a major double bogey on letting some key people who come from these communities that they're, that the golf companies, companies are trying to reach out, you know, let go, you know, like a couple, 
Rachel Melendez, maybe. Damn it, Rachel okay. Melendez, maybe. Was was <gasps> formerly Wait, at the PGA of America. What happened she, to yeah. that goddess? Nothing yeah, she, happened to her. She, she no, threw the deuces. Yeah, she threw deuces, and and not and I don't know what exactly happened with PJ of America. I'm not mm-hmm. sure. You know, obviously, it's not for work, us to get into. It's not for us to get into. But what I'm saying as a golf entry as a whole, if she left PJ of America, why? Where was USGA? Where was somebody else? She she I don't think she should have left the 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 golf industry. And I think as a whole, we That's all so double bogey that. And, and Rachel Melendez maybe is the former um, former. Coordinator for PJ Reach. She basically ran it and all that it had within it. Um, it's, yeah. the, it's the easiest way to describe Rachel. I actually talked to her today, as a matter of fact, but she's happy. But I, I will say, folks like Rachel, she, the golf industry let her down. That's a that's a fact. She should have been promoted somewhere into a VP style gig at any company within the game she's earned her stripes she's played golf at every level she's over 20 year veteran of being working in golf 12 years with the pga of america and, and golf golf should have had her back she actually left the industry and i agree will i i think look if we stop broadcasting podcasting hosting today would golf have our back i, I think about that often mm. would golf have our back would, would i be would i be a pga professional and go Check bags, you know. We, we, you know, we talked to Wyatt Worthington. He he had to stop caddying because the club that he was a caddy at found out he was a Class A PGA professional and got rid of him. You can't caddy here as a PGA professional. That looks bad on us. Go get the hell out of here. Yeah. Wait, I, you ain't gonna give him a job in the shop, right? You ain't gonna give him a right. job somewhere on the grounds, Muirfield Village, right. right? I'll say it. That's fine. I love it, Doug. Let let that thing fly. I'm just saying, no, I I I I, I wholeheartedly. But I'll tell you, and not to transition, but I've got a magical way to do it. And if you're outside the game right now, Henny, looking in, our game looks fragmented. It looks like it's split right down the middle. Like you you have live, you have the PGA Tour. Let's just be honest. I I'll, I'll be honest, you know. And I, I don't know at this moment, given what we're dealing with you know, in in professional game and, and the ball rolling back and all these things. I don't know if golf looks that dope to everybody out there right now, Will. Mm. It, it, I'm, not, I'm not saying it, look, it doesn't look dope because obviously the numbers tell us that, you know, the participation is increasing. But I tell you this, I still think golf looks difficult. It looks difficult to be involved. It looks difficult to want to partake. And on, you know, numerous levels, especially if you want to go just past the introductory, you know, off-site introduction, you know, facilities that we have. Um, I think it looked difficult. But, you know, you just mentioned going back to the ball back. Speaking of difficulty, is, is this going to hinder the game as a whole, guys? Like, like, is it is it going to hurt the game that the shorter person of the, on the PGA Tour now is going to hit even more shorter? Yes. Talking of Doug going off on one, Doug went off on one on the Beyond the Fairway Instagram, and he, he called us out, Will. He said, this is where I stand on the ball rolling back. I didn't what even hear Kenny it. and Will think? What did you say, Doug? I didn't even hear it. I didn't he even said, roll he it back. said, roll it back. He said, That's roll said. it back. I'm with it, though. I, I mean, I, I'm with it. 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 So, Obviously, there's been a ton of conversation this week um, about the ball being rolled back. And I feel like generally in the professional ranks, the response has been pretty negative. Guys don't like it. Uh, And this is what Kyle Porter tweeted out from Tiger Woods in 2017. He said, we've had to lengthen so many golf courses now and eventually you're going to run out of property. Some of the older golf courses, we're going to lose them. I see no reason why we can't be like baseball and have a line of demarcation between college or amateur and the professional ranks, which would be the minor leagues all the way up to the bigs. My idea was to have it so that every professional would have to play a reduced flight ball. That's what Tiger Woods said. Which makes a lot of sense. I mean, not only is it Tiger saying that, but he's thinking, he's a golf course designer, right? He's thinking from a practical point of view as it pertains to golf courses and golf course property. There's a lot to be said in there for golf course setup for some of the older golf courses. I think that's how they've protected them to this point in terms of getting those green salmon fast, changing the runoff areas, increasing rough depth. 
So where you at? Where you at on the fence? Being and... overrun. I'm trying to. I, I I can't hear you right now. I'm trying to understand you in or you out. <laughs> I don't know how. I I need to. I need some more time to think about it because. That's fair. Here's here's the ultimate answer, is. <laughs> this is a very. I don't even know if I'm allowed to say this. Uh, <laughs> my ultimate. <laughs> Okay, I'm just going to say it. I don't care. Either way. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, that's pretty solid, though. Like, I feel I, you. I, I, I get it. Is that bad? No. Am I allowed no. to say that? Is that really you are definitely like... allowed. To, you are allowed to not give yeah. a damn. You yeah. totally are. <laughs> I see, you know, sometimes in golf, like, these conversations come up, and everyone's so, like, outraged about them, and it's back and forth and back and forth, and I'm just sitting there looking, and I'm like, I, 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 don't, I don't care. <laughs> Like do, do we do we do we like, see do we actually see what we're arguing about right now? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. Like, keep the golf ball cool as it is. I'm gonna enjoy like 330 yard drives. Dial it back. I'm gonna enjoy seeing some fuzzy wuzzy flights. Like, uh, it, it, like do the demarcation between <laughs> amateur and professional. Cool. Like whatever makes you happy. I'm good. I'm still gonna hit the damn thing. And I'm still going to just walk after it and have fun. <laughs> oh, here we go. So I love this. I haven't actually seen this graphic yet, but it's just popped up on our screens from Golf Central. Justin Thomas, Sam Burns ripped this rollback proposal. JT says it's so bad for the game of golf. And Sam Burns says, I think it's pretty silly. I don't know if he's saying like the whole thing's silly, if he's on my wavelength where he's like, I just it, don't care. It, this thing's it, dumb. It, it brings up this, it sparks a conversation what USGA individuals like? We need to roll the ball back. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, like how? how I just want to know. Like, hey, how we gonna like, get them this week? Hey, hey, hey I got what, it. My thing is like, what was that keeping them up at night? Like, God, dog, I gotta figure <laughs> out. <laughs> we gotta roll this ball back. Like, but who, I think, I think who, one who of the bad. I think one of the big keys though is as we look at how players are starting to train for speed and, and, you know, via, you know, the science experiment by Bryson DeChambeau, et cetera, over the past few seasons. But as kids are starting to have more speed, you know, it was, it was an anomaly for a guy to have 126, 127 swing speed years ago. Well, now there's almost a guy on every team that can crack 132, right? Absolutely. So I do believe that something needs to be done, uh, which is why I'm in favor of rolling the ball back because these younger uh, guys, and I'm being, it's, Let's be honest. It's specifically in the men's game. Uh, these these guys, they're hitting it further, and they're training for it um, right now. And so but, if we don't do it now, the next five, you're going to do it 10 years later, five years right. later? Well, you're going to do something now. I refute that <laughs> men's game comment, by the way. I, but continue. But what I'm saying is that I, I'm with you because, you know, when you think about it, the baseball is, is different from the amateur level to the professional level. Um the uh, basketball, basketballs are different too. I think the basketball, NBA basketball is like weights like 22 ounces and uh, college is like 20 ounces and the material is different on it. It's NBA heavier. It's, it's heavier. Let's it's heavier, <laughs> but it's heavier, but it's just like the material is different on an NBA basketball. So I, I, I agree with that. My thing is this though, how will it affect the mini tours? Like, will it go down to the mini tours? Is the Carolina mountain tour going to require you to have a, a flight at ball? The reason I said I refute that is because at the at the men's level, yes, it's about swing speed and it's about distance. But then when you bring it down to the women's game, to the mini tours, to the corn ferry tour, then it becomes about spin. And that actually does make a huge difference at every single level. You right. just go back to like the Bellata ball, for example. That was a whole different skill level. That was a whole different way of playing yeah. the game. You were shaping shots. Yeah. yeah. I remember when the groove changes came in. Couldn't spin. I enough. was a couple years into being on tour, and that changed everything because you could hit a really bad shot. You could spin the shit out of it, and it's not going offline. So it actually, for we had the graphic pop up from No Laying Up just there, who said like it's not about limiting anyone's skills. Actually, it's just about equipment they're kind of hand in hand really because the more you improve the equipment the less onus you're putting on skill in my opinion 
And that's what Billy Horschel said. That's when you're really pushing me to today. Count. Yeah, <laughs> Horschel said the same thing. He, he's more of an advocate for making the head smaller. Like, hit it in right. the middle of the sweet spot. You want? Or, I agree. You know, take away the T if you're worried about driving distance. Make them hit off the ground. Mm. Yeah. Right, there we go. There's, there's... I, I had an opinion. You pushed me into an opinion. <laughs> okay. <Yeah>. Ready, <laughs> go. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I mean, obviously, the PGA Tour players has taken full advantage of stuff that was really built for the consumer, to the average amateur, to really enjoy the game. So, uh, yeah, I'm with it, man. Bring this thing on back. Uh, let's let's see let's see let's see Zach Johnson hit that thing 230 yards. See, it's not about that. See, that, that's what I, I I find interesting though when you look at ball construction, Will, because you're going to have to LOL. do. I get it, but like honestly, you're going to have to do certain things to the various layers of the ball so that it does roll back or go shorter. So there's actually a huge, huge, I guess dark cloud around the OEMs right now because if this becomes a thing, they're going to have to spend millions and millions of dollars in R&D. And where's that money going to fall? Like, where are the OEMs going to get that money? They're going to charge us for it. Let me ask you a question. So, Doug, is this, with this rolling the ball back, is this really going to increase visibility towards the better player? I mean, like, will we ever get to see that heartstring player who doesn't hit the ball as far? Like, will we get to see the the David Toms of the world, the Corey Pavins of the world? Like, are, it, are we... It just depends on how they choose to use the physics to roll the ball back. That's I think that's one of the, the questions that I have, right? Because Henny made a good point. You're talking about a ball spinning. The Today's ball, and it started with the, the original Pro V1, there's an initial launch spin, and as the ball gets down range, it actually decreases, this, or a degree of spin decay, right? So what... Tiger's ball or the Balata ball, those balls actually retain spin longer in the shot. That's why they kept curving. Like nowadays, I don't know if you've ever seen a ball kind of go up to the apex and then it straightens out. It'll curve up and then fall straight, right? So that just shows the decrease in spin or the spin decays I'm referencing. So are they going to make the core softer, the mantle layer softer? Are they going to find advanced technologies in in the cover that they're going to use? I don't know. That's all going to be something that they have to find out through R&D. But you know what I do know? You don't give a damn about it. <laughs> nope. Not that. Although that is also true. Doug just said that Henny made a good point. And that's it. I'm done. I'm not talking anymore. Henny made a good point. I'm out. I'm out. Peace out. Bye. See ya. You know what, man? We want to hear more from Feed y'all. That music. What, do y'all, what do y'all think about the, the ro- ball roll back, rolling it back? I don't know. We're going to put Henny on mute like she did me last week. I'm still mad at you for that shit, Henny. That hurt my feelings. And I actually, I had a bunch of people in my DMs talking about some some mute. And I was like, you know what? Never again. <laughs> hey, man, thank you so much, as always, for rocking with us right here beyond the Fairway Golf Channel, NBC Sports, Nuggie Fresco. For Henny Koyak and William Lowry. Roll it back. Peace out. <laughs>